The crew of the Marauder are out for blood to avenge their dead captain, Kate Pride. All this and more on the pages of Marauders, issue number 10. Let's hop on in together and find out what happens next, shall we? Alrighty then, so picking up from where we last left off, the crew of the Marauder had managed to finally regain the body of their fallen Captain Kate. Now they're out for some good old-fashioned revenge. Now the good guys know that a mutant dampening collar would had to have been used to assassinate Kitty and Storm, the new de facto leader of the team. Susses out that these collars being used by their new Russian foes just so happen to have been developed by their very own Forge during his own time working for the government. Forge says that he destroyed all of the records of those collars, but he also had a colleague who just so happened to have photographic memory, so there's a good chance that the Russians have been leaning on him. The Quiet Council, namely Sebastian Shaw, worries about escalating the fight between Krakoa and these Russian anti-mutinists figuring that perhaps they should send in X-Force to deal with this problem more quietly. Naturally, what we as the reader know is that Sebastian Shaw was the one who actually killed Captain Kitty. Now he's letting the Russian-backed Hellfire Club Jr. take the heat for him. It doesn't really matter what the Quiet Council says either, because the Marauders have already ridden off to war. Magneto and Xavier sign off on this course of action with the caveat that they leave no one left behind who could ID them. And so the Marauder Siege of Russian Forces begin. First things first, these guys end up running afoul of an iceberg, which considering where they are in the equator should be impossible, but it's not impossible, it's Iceman. With the ship properly crippled, Forge, along with the new Red Bishop, uh, Bishop, decide to go aboard. We also get a look at Bishop's new costume, and I must say, I really enjoy it. They find the scientist, who naturally was being forced to make these mutant power dampening collars against his will, and is more than happy to be rescued. Emma Frost and Pyro handle the next leg of the mission, and you know what? They don't even need to fire a single shot. Emma just pretty much shuts down all of their minds. Why? Because, well, when they're all thinking the same thing, mainly about her costume, they're very easy to manipulate. Emma being here, too, lets it be known that this is a dual operation between the crew of the Marauder, aka the red set of the Hellfire Trading Company, and the white set as well, which is why Calypso is there, too. So far, we have Russian military, Pyro, Pirate mutants, what could we possibly have next? Oh, what about a UFO? Yeah, that's right. Turns out Christian, Emma's brother in the white set, doesn't have a seafaring vessel like everyone else. Instead, he has a frickin' flying saucer. Oh, there's a great story to that, they say, and we'll tell you about it later. The Russian militants get mopped up, but the majority of them don't actually get killed. Instead, Emma decides to go inside their mind and do a little bit of rewriting. Now, anytime they think anything in terms of bigotry, superiority, or racism, they will become physical physically ill. After that, they drop them off in the middle of Red Square and declare mission accomplished. Though, it's a bittersweet victory for sure. They believe they found vengeance for the people who killed Kitty Pry, but we as the reader know that's not true. Then there's the matter of this doctor. They can't let him go home for a number of reasons. One, if they do, the Russians would almost certainly kill or try and recapture him. And two, he just knows too much that could hurt Krakoa and mutant kind. So instead, Emma and the others decide to forcibly retire him, wiping his mind of all knowledge of his previous life and instead choosing to let him live out the rest of his days in the Morlock Country Club. If nothing else, Mask certainly seems happy he finally has someone to golf with now, which is the end of a nice running gag that started a few issues back. Now what of the matter of resurrecting Kitty? After all, the X-Men had seemingly defeated death itself, but try though they might. Xavier and the Five just can't seem to do it. In fact, they don't know what they're doing wrong. They never even truly understood why Kitty was not allowed access to Krakoa, and now they fear they may never be able to figure it out. So as it would seem moving forward, Krakoa is going to be having its first ever funeral as the comic comes to a close. And so that was Marauders issue number 10, everybody. Another rip roar and action issue from Jerry Duggan that really helps me get back into the X-Men swing of things after so long away. Obviously, I concentrated a lot on the action portion of this book, and that's really good, but as with a lot of these new Dawn of X titles, some of the best writing comes in the appendices, and here, a bunch of heartfelt emails shared back and forth between Kitty before her death and Nightcrawler. As I mentioned before, making Kitty the star of this book and then killing her off seemingly so quickly before truly understanding the mystery connection between her and Krakoa has been one of the most unexpected and pleasant surprises in this new era of X-Men, and I can't wait to see where Duggan takes it next. Overall, I feel comfortable giving this one an 8 out of 10. Man, did I miss new Marvel comics. 
Hey there everyone, it's your old pal Cave Jewel, and if you're seeing me right now, that means you watched to the end of the video, which I am very appreciative of. It really helps drive engagement and retention and all that other good YouTube stuff. So does liking and commenting. Wink, wink. If you like my content too, you should check out my Patreon page. We just redid all the tiers, so there's a ton of great rewards. You can become a patron for as little as a dollar a month, and well, it would just really help me out. It's never expected, but always appreciated. So until next time, everyone, I've been Cape Joel, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.